Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and every go uh, every single person who could ever refer us. You know, I just decided to start running in this direction for the intro, and I don't think I'm gonna actually stop that much. Never mind, I'm barely gonna stop at least a decent amount. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest, I have no clue what to do. We're gonna do something, okay? Let's have an update on Hypixel Skyblock. Right now, I'm at the point where the next thing I need to unlock is the Crimson Isle. But in order to unlock, or actually no, it's the Zealot Bruiser Hideout. But in order to do that, I need to, uh, I need to get to combat level 20. Which, uh, if you don't know, in Hypixel Skyblock you have skills. You have a lot of things, but one of the things you have is skills, which determines how good you are at a certain thing. There's, uh, five of them. There's foraging, which is just cutting down trees. Fishing. There's farming, which includes plants and animals. Uh, and then there's fighting. Just kidding, it's called combat. Uh, that's something I really wish they made fighting instead of combat. Because, you know, the alliteration. Fishing, foraging, farming, and then fighting. But there's also still mining, which, considering the game is Minecraft, makes a ton of sense. And there's no replacement for mining that starts with F. So, I get it. But you know what? I'm actually gonna go to the edge of the world. We're gonna go past this jungle. Cause, I don't know. I feel like it. I'm improvising. I have no clue what I want to do. But back to Hypixel Skyblock. I have to get to uh, combat level 20. I'm currently at combat level 18. Uh, here's, uh, here's the thing. Combat level 18 is... I can't remember exactly how much it is, but to get there, it took me a while. And currently, I have t about 277,000 uh, combat XP total. Not just uh, within the amount I have to get to get to the next level, 19, but total. In total, at level 18, I have uh, 200. 50,000 ish I need 500,000 to get to uh, level 20 isn't that fun so yeah we just spawned back in uh, yeah sorry for that stuff but let's check out what we got uh, potions and tungsten neat to get to level 20, I need to get to 500,000 combat XP. That is a whole friggin' lot, and I have no clue why they made it that high. To get to the Crimson Isle, I need combat level 22. I don't have time for combat level 22. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's a spear. Neat. Alright, let's, let's be smart. Let's just start making some arrows, because we need arrows. We have a bunch of wooden arrows and only a few flaming arrows. We could probably get better arrows, but I uh, don't feel like it. Actually, real quick. Andrew, you're, you're right here. Alright, so uh, something interesting I've just remembered is that uh, arrows can also be crafted via ice torches, which actually become frost burn arrows instead of regular flaming arrows. And they require ice torches, which require wood to make. So we're going to do some foraging. Oh, you know what we can do? Let's do something this episode. Let's set up a desert base, you know? That'll be good, because that'll... It'll give us a quick way to get to the desert, which we could explore this massive pit for one. And we'll, we can make it or, or we can buy a pylon to get way closer to this crimson patch and also closer to the jungle. And eventually we could set up a jungle uh, biome. If you don't know what I meant by any of those words, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, let's make some ice torches. Oh, you make it with three regular torches. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, what is this? Eucalypt? 
Someone's a pet sugar glider. What the frick? Oh, wow. You see that other thing that's not following us? That's a sugar glider. Sick. All right. Well, that's very nice. And then... Frostburn Barrows, baby! It's not even that close to enough, so let's just... Okay, making all of these. Frostburn Arrows! Hey! We have exactly 4,500. All right, sick. All right, uh, let's, first things first, let's get some better gear. Ooh. Platinum axe and platinum hammer. Aight, baby. Now we've got a ton of ammo for this thing. Um. So I guess, uh, yeah. Let's start making a desert base. Ha! <laughs> Did you see that? Let's flatten out this ground a little bit and let me tell you a story. Uh, this story is, as you'll probably able to tell, entirely fictional, and I haven't thought of the story yet, so I'm literally just going to be improvising every second of it. There was once a boy who uh, lived in the forest. He hunted and foraged every day for food, but he enjoyed his life. He thought it was a very good life. He was very happy. Then one day, there was an evil man that came across him in the woods. This evil man thought he could use the child to be his labor force, since no one would want the child, logically. But first he would have to catch the child, and he feared that he would never be able to find the child again, and the child would be lost forever. This is a weird premise. Again, I'm making this up on the spot. So the man uh, tells the child... Hello. And the child says hello back. He says, You know, I have friends like you. They're smart, talented, and creative. The child's like, okay. And the man was like, You know, they all said the same thing to me before they died. That you should never trust a snake. And the child was like, yeah, I agree. Snakes can bite you and they're dangerous. The man was excited for he, his plan was working, he thought. The man continued, You know, snakes could be in every corner of the wilderness. Sorry, I had to move the camera slightly because I felt like it. So the man told the child, uh, yeah, yeah, snakes. Can't, uh, can't be trusted, and they're all throughout the wilderness. Oh my gosh. And then the boy said, yes, I'm well aware. Uh, what, what does that have to do to me, with me? The man offered the boy to stay with him in his own house, uh, at least temporarily, until there were no, most, no more snakes in the woods. But the boy decided against it, for one simple reason. He could kill snakes. So, uh, the man never convinced him to join him and never got kidnapped into becoming part of, of the labor force. Moral of the story, uh, be competent in what you do. Alright, I'm bored, let me tell you another story. There once with this guy who thought he had the worst life ever. He lived an extremely boring job and 
uh, worked terrible hours for little pay, but he didn't have enough experience to get a better job, is what he thought. So then he made this friend, and this friend said, Hey, I think I could convince him, my boss, to get a, uh, to get a job for you. And the guy was like, that'd be great. So, turns out the guy could get a job for him. And so the guy uh, got a job at his friend's place. And everyone was happy. Until the man met this other guy. And that, and that guy was like, hey, I live this crappy job uh, in this crappy environment. And it really sucks. But the man... Unlike his friend before him, didn't offer uh, that guy his help because there, because he didn't, uh, his boss didn't need anybody else. So there's no reason to say, "Hey, my boss is hiring," because he's not. Eventually, that guy worked himself so hard that he had a heart attack. Moral of the story: Pay it forward. A. Lol. You can't get in, you're stupid. Alright. Let's change the genre, shall we? From possibly fables, question mark, to full-on ghost stories. Once upon a time, there was this girl. She lived alone with her mother, but she almost never saw her because she worked in the day and her mother worked in the night. One night, the girl had just gotten home. Mom, I'm home. Expecting her mother to be leaving soon. There was no response. I guess she left early. Or maybe she's out someplace. The girl assumed. She went on about her day. Until... Uh... Until the next morning. Once again, she said, Mom, I'm home. Once again, no response. This... Was concerning. To say the least. So the girl tried calling to her mom. No response. The girl was really wor worried by now. So she went to the police. But on her way there, she started being followed by a man. This man looked very suspicious. And when she sped up, so did he. Eventually, there were some people around, so she decided if this guy tries to do something to me, these people will see it. And they'll do something about it. So she slowed back down, trying to be casual. But the man just kept following her and following her. At this point, she became even more worried. Not only was there this creep following her, but he was willing presumably willing to attack her, even with people around. That was not a good prospect. So the girl slowed down significantly, and eventually she's, she stopped. So did the man. She couldn't even see the man's face. But she slowed down and asked, Why are you following me? man made no response. She said, there are tons of people here. If you try and attack me, there's no doubt that any one of them will be able to will, to see, will be able to see you and stop you. The man had no response. At this point, the girl was aggravated. So she, so she snapped and said, look, if you're going to attack me, do it. I hate this suspense. 
I hate this suspense because it makes me worried that something truly bad has, is about to happen. And I just don't know. The man had no response. But the people around her noticed. They asked her what was happening. Is this man hurting you? She said, no, but I'm afraid he will. He's been following me for some time. Obviously, the people who were asking were very sketched out by this. So they said to the man, if you keep following her, we'll call the police. And she said she was already heading to the police station. A few people accompanied her there. The man did not follow. They got to the police station, reported her mom missing. And then she started walking home. Now the people left by this point, so there was no one there. She remained worried that someone would come out and, and attack her. But when she got back home, she felt relieved that no one eventually did, that no one uh, ended up attacking her or following her. That was when she noticed her mother's car was in the driveway. At this point, the woman wasn't happy. She was terrified. She didn't know what that meant. Her mom had been missing and now she just suddenly appeared. What was that supposed to mean? But she realized that she was just having negative thoughts and that there's a chance that this didn't even mean anything. So she walked inside. As she closed the door behind her, All right, these are where these people are gonna be. But as the girl closed the door behind her, she heard it lock. There was the man standing right behind her. She tried to scream, but another man grabbed her mouth from behind. They quickly tied her up. I'm gonna pause this. Sorry, I had just had to mute it for dramatic purposes. So then, the girl was in a blindfold. She went down into what her presu was presumably her basement. Eventually, her blindfold was taken off as she was tied to a chair. Her mouth was still gagged and next to her, her mother. She was curious. She had just been in the basement yesterday. They must have taken her mother down here after the fact. There were men and women there, all around them. And as the men and women, all with their hoods off in bright orange robes, stared at the two women, the mother and daughter could only look at each other. I love you. I'm sorry you have to die this way alongside me. Then they hear a beep. You see, the girl had a sister, the mother, another daughter. And she was worried, so she went to check on them. She was curious when she got into the house and didn't see anything. The people hadn't gotten up there yet. Sorry, I'm back just because uh, someone else arrived. The sister came in. Hello? Is anybody home? The robed people would have to wait until they had a good opportunity to snag her. But at one moment, she spotted them. And turns out she had a taser. She pulled it out and tased the person. It was a man. All right. Is there anyone else here? No one answered. The sister descended down into the stairwell. Her taser out at any sec and at ready for any corner attacks. The sister found her mother and her sister, her sister and mother, tied up. 
she quickly r rushed over to them and freed them both. And then they carefully crept out of the house. When they got to the police, they called the police. But by the time the police got there, all the people, even the body that the sister had taste, vanished. The girl and the sister were left mostly unharmed, but the mother was left traumatized. The, Af the specific events she never said, but clearly they were enough to make her ne never able to be left alone again. Uh, that was a very crappy ghost story. I'm pro I'm sorry, but eh, I'm playing Terraria. It's you know evening. I'm kind of ready to go to bed. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. And if you want to see more similar content to this, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you all later. Bye.